Greetings my friends and welcome back to the Home Slice. I have another dual grit test for you guys today. Those of you who've been following along know that we're testing slicing force with this 45 degree wedge that transfers force down into the scale. And then we're going through this 40 millimeter manila rope, which I have named Andy, which is a near death experience, which is a reference to the death rope, which is over there, which is a ship rope that kills everything. So this is like almost killing everything. We're testing different stones on the same steel on these Victorinox knives to see how they do. At the end, we do a toughness test to weed out any edges that have a wire edge or have a low amount of toughness. I do that by smacking them into a piano leg with a 5 kg dumbbell. Very non-scientific, but it sort of quantifies the loss of edge from a medium high impact sort of task so that it's not just a wear resistance test, but it also incorporates elements of edge stability. Today we're doing everything the same as we have in terms of the fact that I've been doing dual grit edges, 250 grit on an easy lap diamond stone on one side, diamond plate, and stropping with a flat denim strop with mother's mag auto polish, metal polish. This time, the fine side of the edge has been done with a cheap agate stone. This thing is listed as about 10,000 grit. When I bought it on Amazon, it was like 10 bucks and the brand was Anself. You can still get these, I think, but they have a different brand name. If you look up agate sharpening stone or agate pocket sharpening stone, you probably will be able to find something. But we'll see if that's worth doing depending on how good the edge tests. Now this edge actually got down to 140 grams on the best machine. But the feeling of aggression is still quite good. The reason that we've taped this off is because I don't want any knife to have an advantage in terms of additional edge length. And so I've taped it off so that the edge length is the same as the knives that I normally test. Now this is the second best score on a dual grit edge I've tested before, right after the one that was sharpened with my original dual grit method. That edge lasted about 30% longer than any of the fine or coarse edges I've tested so far, and it had the best aggression that I had tested up to that point. It was beat out by the Spyderco Ultra Fine in terms of aggression and long lasting cutting ability but not necessarily in terms of smoothness. So Spyderco Ultra Fine Dual Grit Edge has for the moment been the record setter, but my, my original dual grit method is probably the best balance of additional long lasting aggression without giving up too much smoothness. It will be very interesting to see how this one does because this is the closest score to the 130 grams that was present on the edge of my original dual grip method. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Let's get into it. So that was about two and a half kg. Uh, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the exact same reading I got on my, yep, original dual grid edge. So, looking very similar so far, let's see how long that trend lasts. Time for Mr. Andy. Okay, very interesting. Once through the rope, I would say this is the first dual grit edge that sort of feels similar to a fine edge in that it felt like it lost its slicing aggression a bit early. So for the first probably one third of the rope, it felt very similar to my original dual grit method edge. But after getting partway through the rope, it seemed to experience a pretty dramatic loss in slicing aggression. So let's see where we're at in the best. 345, which is not too bad. That's a pretty, uh, pretty average result. So it will at least go through to the second cutting of Mr. Andy. 
I'm assuming that I'm going to have to work it pretty hard and push it pretty hard to get through that because it does feel as if the aggression is gone. And because of that, I'm a little bit doubtful that this will perform a lot better than the ruby stone, which I just tested. It should be noted that these, these tests, um, they're not indicative that if you sharpened a, a knife edge with both sides on one of these ruby or agate stones, that it would necessarily be good or bad in, in proportion with my testing. This is specifically a dual grid edge. It's specifically an edge that is sharpened with a different grit on each side. So just a bit of a disclaimer there. If you like agate stones, more power to you. Okay, twice through, definitely a bit more difficult than the other dual grid edges. Marked difference there. Let's see and observe what the best has to say. Three ninety-five, just under. Okay, this is not a bad result. Not a bad result. What was the normal Spyderco Ultra Fine? Spyderco Ultra Fine was 349 at this point. Okay. Interesting. I guess this is closer to the Norton India results. Okay, let's do one more. See how it goes. Sorry guys, um, right in the middle of cutting with this uh, agate edge, my uh, DJI Osmo Action just died, the battery died on it. So um, part way through uh, cut number three. So here we go. Okay, getting a little bit harder, but we've got there in the end, I guess 395 best and felt loss of aggression kind of tells us that, doesn't it? But let's adjust this so we can see the best. Let's see where we're at. Oh, still says 383. Hey, 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 well, that's not too bad. Let's see if we can go another round. Okay, you know, this is not bad. This has held on to a decent amount of aggression. I'm relatively impressed, relatively impressed by this. Let's see where we're at on the best machine. Oh, 238. That's an odd reading, quite good. Let's, uh, let's just confirm that. <laughs> that would be a very odd reading. <laughs> 256. 
Well, that is very odd. Very odd indeed. Um, I don't know what to make of that. I've had something like this happen before in a chopping test. I, I had wondered if the, the dual grit produces that really thin burr that then gets shaped into sort, sort of a razor edge. And I experienced numbers that were nearing the 400s. Hey. Dropping off to, or coming back to the 200s range. And I had wondered if perhaps that dual grit burr had broken off and um, left a slightly keener edge than maybe the rounded over apex that was there previously. I don't know if something like that is going on here, but let's try to go for four. This is very, very odd results. Definitely not cutting like most 200 best edges. Definitely not. But it must have a spot there that is hanging on to some edge keenness. Okay, that was not terrible. It was a lot, a lot of force, but not terrible. Okay, well, let's <laughs> see where we're at on the best machine. Yeah, no, I should wait to hold on. I should... Okay, 438. Interesting. Wow, that 230 test <laughs> is reproducible, but it was a bit of an outlier. I wonder what happened there. So it cut uh, five times, uh, which is just one less. It's, it's one away from the record, almost as much as the Spyderco Ultrafine. It definitely didn't hold on to its aggression like the Spider Co Ultrafine did, but I would say this is a this is a valid dual grade edge. I think if you didn't want to spend thirty or forty bucks on a Japanese Waterstone and you wanted to spend ten bucks instead on this, and you had a diamond plate and this agate from Amazon, that it's a viable dual grade edge. Like it, it has outlasted slightly my original method um so very interesting uh okay let's do the slicing test and toughness test and we'll wrap it up Okay, 7 kg. That is probably the best slicing aggression reading of any edge I have tested so far, especially given that it has um, cut the rope five times. Very interesting. All right, toughness test. So that's about 112 grams lost, and that is probably the worst toughness rating so far. Interesting. Uh, okay, as is my custom, I nearly forgot about a paper test. For all you guys who don't have a best, this is the paper test. Hmm, it's quite good, like nearly push cutting good at the base of the blade, 
not quite push cutting good, but very good slicing. Uh, out closer to the tip, you've still got some living edge out there. Through the middle, it's slicing. I can feel though that it slows down in that area that right there, oh yeah. I can feel that it slows down in that whole area where it went into the pine block. I think that's a bit of a red flag, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a bit of a red flag that this actually might have left a bit of a wire edge uh, where the Spyderco Ultrafine didn't. And the wire edge cut through the rope decently well, but once we smacked it into the the pine block, it may have just uh, destabilized and bent over. Oh wow, I can see, I can visibly see some, uh, I don't know if I can catch it on camera. Oh, there it is. Do you see that? It's flattening evident. You can see there's like a little white reflection in the sun. That's not really been the case for a lot of the others. Let's see, where's the one that I did? The spider coat ultra fine. Oh, here. Okay. So that's as opposed to this. I'll try to set it up in the same area. It's the mark from the pine block is right there. So keep your eyes on that point. And you'll notice there's no bright reflection when it's pointed straight at the camera. And uh, that's a, as opposed to this. You can sort of clearly see at certain angles the glow while well, I can clearly see. I don't know if you guys, there. Uh, it's really hard to catch on camera, I'm sorry guys. But I can actually see there's a visible difference between the two edges. There's actually quite a marked difference. Okay, so uh, let me retract my recommendation, I don't know that the agate stone is good for dual grit edge because it may leave a little bit too much burr, resulting in a wire edge that lacks a bit of durability as compared to other dual grit edges. Let me look at my original. Uh, where's the strike zone? It's right there. My original does have a bit more dulling out near the tip, but interestingly, it's not in the strike zone. The strike zone is okay, but the dulling is a bit more evident. The ruby didn't get quite as much use, and I don't see. So it's not just normal that every single edge breaks off with the pine block. Um, this one didn't, this one didn't, this one didn't. Um, so, interesting. We may have a durability issue there. So, let me just withdraw my recommendation on that. Okay guys, here you have the actual numbers. Obviously this agate edge is over on the right side. And you can see that it's a similar best to both the Spyderco Ultrafine and the original Dual Grid Edge. A little bit better than the Spyderco Ultrafine Dual Grid Edge the ceramic dual grit edge. Now it cut more than the original dual grit edge but less than the ceramic and very very good aggression numbers on the amount of kilos it took to slice through that sisal rope. Very similar average best to the spider co ultrafine and the original dual grit edge just a hair more. Uh, where you really see this edge kind of falling through is at the impact loss. It's got almost twice, it, it literally has twice the worst impact loss. And when you looked at it in the light, it was pretty evident that that was due to a wire edge. I would not recommend making a dual grit edge this way. It seems that the agate stone doesn't have the properties to remove the damaged metal and create an effective edge that is durable. So that's kind of a surprise ending. Even though the numbers are pretty good, there's some weak metal under there. If you want to see the last video where I did the ruby stone that's on the other side of this, that video is right over here. But for all the rest of you, I'll just say, hey, peace out from the home slice. Take care.